PNG files represent the bulk of Android image content, especially if you've got a lot of UI elements in your application rather than photo data. But PNG files also represent a huge problem in terms of file size. They're easy to bloat and too often, we don't give them enough attention to make them smaller. My name is Colt McCandless and ensuring that your app is easy to distribute and that images are quick to grab from your server has everything to do with taking a really hard look at how you're using PNG files. Uh, let's take a look at how bad this problem is in reality. Take this simple 16 by 16 pixel red square. The default exported image from Photoshop creates a 2.7K image, where the one that's been processed with some attention to the file size only ends up being 121 bytes. The point here is straightforward. If you're serving a load of PNG files to your app that haven't been optimized to to this degree, you're going to be wasting a lot of your user's bandwidth. See, at its core, PNGs are simple file formats that apply a lossless compression algorithm to the pixel data. The end result is that your image maintains 100% of its original quality, but as a trade-off, means that the image can be bloated in terms of file size. Other formats, like JPEG, achieve better compression radios than PNG by applying a lossy compression algorithm to the pixels, which reduces the number of unique pixels in the image, before handing it off to the loss stages. This uh, first step of reducing image quality helps make the pixel data more compressible to the lossless encoder and also allows you, the content creator, to make a decision. Do you want better image quality or do you want smaller file sizes? Sadly, PNG's simple file format doesn't come equipped with the ability to apply a lossy preprocess to the pixel data. But this doesn't give you an excuse to use these bloated PNGs in your apps. With a uh, little bit of gusto and elbow grease, you too can easily incorporate a lossy preprocessor to your PNG pipeline, helping reduce the bloat in these files. See, the problem that we're solving here really isn't a new one. I mean, cleaning up PNG files to be less bloated and applying a lossy preprocess is an issue that's been around a while. A, a simple Google search proves that. I mean, when you do, you get a plethora of tools that are already available to help accomplish these same tasks on your behalf. Now, most of these tools are command line driven so that they fit into your existing build systems, or they've been ported to languages that are easy to adapt to your content servers. In fact, script PNG will allow you to run a bunch of different compression codecs on your image file and see which one gives the best compression ratio for the right visual quality. Basically, it'll do all the work of finding the sweet spot between compression and quality for you. And in reality, there's lots of situations where you shouldn't be using PNG files at all. I mean, if you don't need transparency, a JPEG file with carefully tuned compression settings would be much more valuable to you. Or if you do need transparency, consider storing the transparent channel in a separate JPEG file, which you then combine back into the alpha channel of your image at a load time point in the future. This will help reduce the overall footprint of the alpha channel since it can usually be compressed much better than the RBG data by the JPEG algorithm. Of course, if you want transparency, animation, and great compression, you could just use the WebP format. WebP is an open source image format from Google that supports alpha transparency, lossless, and lossy compression, as well as animation. The entire purpose of this image format is to be a one-stop image format shop for developers of all sizes. And the good news is that WebP is natively supported in Android as of 4.2.1. Well, technically a bit earlier than that, but all the good bells and whistles landed at 4.21, which uh, is basically SDK 17 and higher, accounting for 67 percent of the total global market presence of Android as of the filming of the episode. Of course, that'll change in like 10 minutes, so, you know. And that's actually a large portion of the market, so don't be afraid to experiment with WebP where it makes sense to. But in truth, WebP and lossy preprocessing steps will only help you with the size of your image during distribution. Now, once the image is loaded into memory, they're decompressed into their regular format so that they can be used for rendering, meaning that all the file compression only helps you with data transfer, not CPU memory residency. That's a whole separate topic. But distribution sizes are the smallest of your worries, which is why you should check out the rest of the Android Performance Patterns content. And don't forget to join the G Plus community for other great tips from developers just like you. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.